everyone. <laughs> so the Quran tells us that the believers worry about the hour and that it's a blink of an eye away or even closer than that. All through the Quran, as well as in the previous scriptures, the importance of the Day of Judgment has been made very clear. God hasn't left us in the dark about what it is like or how to make sure our destiny turns out in our favor, but we have the responsibility to take that advice and make that initial decision to listen to him or to disobey him. The believers say we hear and we obey without any questions. They know their knowledge is limited while God is the omniscient one. In Surah 38, verse 46, God says, we bestowed upon them a great blessing, awareness of the hereafter. Uh, we submitters who are blessed with awareness should never lose sight of our ultimate destiny, which is that we will all be returned to God. And the way we lived here determines where we are sent after that. Um, in audio six at 45 minutes and 50 seconds, the messenger of the covenant discusses such concepts as well. So for easy reference, I just transcribed this part of the audio, but feel free to verify for yourselves too. He said, God told you exactly what to do for your PRA, post-retirement account, how to advance the funds for your PRA, the most important period of your life. Every prayer, every contact prayer God gives you, let us say, a million dollars. It's actually more than that, but God puts in your account a million dollars, and every time, remember God, you make a deposit. So examine what this verse here means. You ask yourself every day how much I put in my PRA account. You must examine yourself every day because on that day when you wake up on the day of resurrection, you're going to open up your PRA book and say, how much do I have? That will decide what you're going to be for eternity. In here, you go to school and you work very hard to have a nice, decent life here. You have to do the same for eternity. Are you going to have a nice, decent life there forever? Are you going to be an honored person or are you going to be a humiliated person? It is all in your hand. God makes it up to you. You can make deposits as much as you want. Hearing this, we should feel a strong eagerness to take advantage of such a trade and make as many deposits as we can into our post-retirement account while we still have the time. Because as much as we may forget, since we can get distracted and caught up in our worldly life here so easily, our time here is shorter than it may seem a lot of the time. In Surah 93, verse 4, the Quran says, The hereafter is far better for you than this first life. When you really believe that in your core and have your eye on the prize, so to speak, it changes you as a person for the better. You care less about the insults you get from disbelievers and just repeat to yourself, We belong to God and to Him we are returning. So long as you're on God's side, God is on your side. A lot of elderly people specifically can tell you how they feel like their life has passed by with the blink of an eye and how they themselves are stunned by this when they look back on their lives. Younger people instead tend to want to rush their life, like I'm guilty of myself because you get too excited to reach the next milestone, but time still moves at the same pace whether you rush it in your head or not. What matters more is making the most of the time you're given because you can never get it back. In Surah 70, verses 4 through 7, it says, The angels with their reports climb to him in a day that equals 50,000 years. Therefore shall resort to a gracious patience, for they see it far away while we see it very close. Also in Psalm 90, verse 12, it says, So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. The problem is that we think we have time, but we really have no idea when our time is up. So you should ask yourself, if not now, when will you make the decision to change and put in the work to redeem yourself? In the end, it's our life purpose to worship God alone and prove that we choose God first above anything else as our Lord and Master. Once we die, there is no going back, so let us not die in a state of wickedness, inshallah. When someone passes away, especially if they're a disbeliever, it kind of hits you how big of an opportunity they had all this time to work righteousness and turn things around for themselves once and for all but they just completely threw away such a precious chance they were given by God. And these examples should remind us not to take this life and this opportunity for granted. One example that sat with me earlier this year was when Stephen Hawking died. Uh, throughout much of his 76 years of life, he observed the greatness of the universe in detail, something that God describes as being even greater than the creation of the human being. But instead, he said in this quote, 
It's my view that the simplest explanation is there is no God. No one created our universe and no one directs our fate. This leads me to a profound realization. There's probably no heaven and no afterlife either. So we know that there's no way anybody could defend such a statement like that on the Day of Judgment, and Stephen Hawking is just one example out of millions of others. Once you die, there's no going back and no escape for the disbelievers from the retribution they earned for themselves. Examples like this should make us feel more appreciative for our guidance because people like him are everywhere. If you don't value God's warnings and teachings in the Quran, you're the one that's losing out and missing out. God says in the Quran, work righteousness to show your appreciation. So it makes sense that if you're not doing your best to do what God says and living a righteous life, it's like your actions show that you're truly not appreciating your time here and making the best of it. Surah 74 verse 11 says, let me deal with one I created as an individual. Also, Surah 19 verse 95 says, all of them will come before him on the day of resurrection as individuals. As we read here, we will all inevitably be summoned to God and held accountable individually. All ties among us will be severed and we're on our own. The people who blindly follow their parents or religious scholars reap what they sowed, and that's their own issue. They could have chosen not to do that. For these reasons, among others, we should strive to only worry about our own necks and not get caught in what other people are doing to the point where it makes you forget about your own level of righteousness and what you can do to ensure a better afterlife for yourself. Because your actions are what you're going to be held accountable for at the end of the day, not what other people are doing. Remember God and remember why you exist. In 1 Corinthians 11, 28 through 30, it says, But a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick, and a number sleep. Throughout your life, you may sometimes feel like your limits are being pushed, like when we get tested through each other, but it's reassuring to know that God does not put us in any given situation that he knows we wouldn't be able to handle. A lot of times, you may think it's impossible for you to cool your temper around a certain person or not automatically be suspicious of someone else's actions, but God knows you have it in you to do the right thing in these circumstances. He knows more about the capabilities he has blessed you with more than you do. God is also always readily available to help you whenever you ask for his help, but we have to be willing to work hard to redeem ourselves too because we signed up for this. It's better to be hard on yourself in terms of your level of submission rather than think that you're set and not think you have anything more to improve in. When we compare ourselves to others, we shouldn't compare ourselves to the worst and think that we're doing fine, but rather compare ourselves and our actions to the best examples of submitters to God to find more things about ourselves that we could get better at and correct about ourselves. God says that the believers compete in righteousness and continue to strengthen and develop their own souls throughout their lives, so that's what we should strive to do. I'd like to end my speech, inshallah, with a nice prayer from the Quran, Surah 17, verse 80, and say, My Lord, admit me an honorable admittance, and let me depart an honorable departure, and grant me from you a powerful support. Thank you. Awesome, awesome speech, Sarah. So, do we have any questions for Sarah while she's up there? Oh, okay. We do. I really enjoyed your speech, Mashallah. Um, right over here. Oh, okay. um, so, I have a question for you because you know what you what you quoted from Stephen Hawking is amazing because this guy was so smart, and uh, uh, according to the worldly sense, not in terms mm -hmm. of you know the real truth, but he rejected God outright and so strongly. And so I wanted to ask you, what, what do you think the reason is for people that are exposed, like for example us, who maybe we know like one-tenth of his worldly knowledge about the universe versus someone that's an expert in it, why do you think, for example, he, he disregarded you know, God and, and God's existence, but for example, other people, they readily accept that with such uh, lesser examples like the, in the universe, like the proofs in the universe. Yeah, a lot of scientists, like, if they don't physically see someone like God, they don't 
believe in God that and then they just think that everything just got created by itself. It's like when people think that a factory can explode and print out a dictionary on its own or something. But um, other people, even though they might not have his type of worldly knowledge, they just don't have the faith. So that's what they're lacking, I'd say. So. Okay. Yeah. Salam alaikum. Thank you so much for your beautiful yes. speech. I really enjoyed it. Um, my question is kind of a uh, little bit related to, um, well, it's Stephen Hawking. And I'm wondering, somebody like Stephen Hawking is so amplified in the academic and world circles about his studies, his books, his interviews online. What do you think is the source the worldly source, I mean, def definitely it's the devil, but how is it driven that such a person such, gets such huge uh, cover, like exposure? Because we know how his life was cut into, you know, the, the disease that he lived with, and he was constantly being put on the screen for people to be in awe of his theories, but then, you know, he died leaving us this, you know, sad, <laughs> <laughs> an empty message. I don't know. What do you think is the source of that? Well, I think God definitely tested him with all his knowledge, and he miserably failed, so that constituted for his um, retribution since he was in his 20s, I think, till he was 76. So I think the devil definitely whispered to him, and also I'm sure all the other scientists around him and everything he learned from them influenced his thought because all of them usually believe the same way. It's rare that you don't have an atheist scientist. They usually are. So that's what I would say. Awesome. And the last comments right here. Uh, Sarah? I, yes. So this is more of a comment more than a question. I just want to actually uh, congratulate you, mashallah. This was a, a phenomenal speech. And, Thank you. Uh, you know, People like you, um, you guys are going to be the the future of submission, presenting God's religion, and you know it's a it's a blessing. You know, you see that the truth speaks for itself, and uh, when you see and you know hear, uh, you know, information being presented in such tactful with wisdom, you know, presenting the truth, you know, it's truly so joyous, and you know, it deserves a lot of congratulations. Thank Michelle. you, Michelle.